March 19, 2024. Guys, uh, looks like we're getting get some sunshine and come out of this cold weather we had. We're still at 30 degrees real feel here at 8.32 a.m. Central Time in Central Mississippi. And uh, But I think that's going to be one of the last cold spells that we're having as far as below freezing, I hope. But about a week ago, I did a video, I think it was a week ago yesterday, about the feds had closed their lending window, the overnight method for smaller institutions, mainly smaller institutions to borrow money. Now, I'm not talking about little mom and pop banks, but I'm, what, there's a separation between most of the banks in the nation and the super banks, J.P. Morgan, some of the other ones. They don't really rely on that Fed window and the overnight borrowing as much as the other institutions, the smaller ones do. But when I did that video, I was thinking that it looked like an attempt to consolidate all the power of the banking system into just a few hands. And we've talked about that, I guess, for a year now, saying that it would end up with you would need ATMs, you would need tellers. You wouldn't need the small banks. You wouldn't need cash because it isn't going to be worthless. They're going to get a debit card. And it, the bad part about that is that it will be, I think, highly regulated on your social media score. We'll leave it at that. But now today, a week later, they're saying that banks are in limbo without a crucial lifeline, and that is that overnight Fed lending window. Here's where cracks may appear next. This was... Uh, Put up about an hour ago this morning now, there's three points i think about what's going on and they're listed right here in this article it says the forces that consumed three regional lenders last march remember in california what do you have western uh republic bank or something like that it was three then they got bought up very quickly that was the beginning and on, and on that um week when we were doing the videos on the buy-ups in california and the bailouts we said this was going to start. They're getting ready for the digital currency. They don't need all these smaller banks. They don't need the confusion of different lenders. It's going to be one boss in charge, and that will be the feds and whoever's running that. But again, the forces that consumed three regional lenders last March have left hundreds of smaller banks wounded as merger activity, a key potential lifeline, has slowed to a trickle. Now, that's just one of the lifelines. The overnight window was the other one. But with the small banks, what they've been doing since last March, when we saw that collapse in California, they've been merging. That is the way that they do it. Like you get some smaller banks under trouble, they merge it and try to uh, put all their assets into one pot and survive. But that's not going to last very much longer. Claros Group analyzed about 4,000 institutions and found 282 with both high levels of commercial real estate exposure. That's key, guys. Look at the big cities. Office buildings are now, they're, they're empty, and they're taking a lot of taxpayers' money to build apartments in these once, uh, office, once very nice office buildings, things like that. And I'm sure you know who will probably be living in those. But it's collapsing the commercial real estate. China's largest commercial real estate group collapsed. A few months back, we talked about that. And that was the number one GDP in the world, was China's commercial real estate. It's collapsed. And so many people have invested in real estate trying to buy up homes and things like that and a lot of people are out there saying let's wait it's, the prices are going down and that we have seen that because no one can afford them they're dropping thousands and hundreds of thousands off the prices of homes still no one can afford them why because inflation's eat into everyone's paycheck to where you can barely make it and there's a lot of jobs being lost going to uh, foreigners as we speak it's all about the collapse and the control. It says, behind the scenes, regulators have been prodding banks with confidential orders to improve capital levels, money, and staffing. Now, is that improvement in staffing, guys? you got to watch how this stuff is written by financial institutions and, and uh, reports. Again, they... Behind the scenes, regulars, regulators have been prodding banks, excuse me, my Huskies are back there playing, 
says regulators have been prodding banks with confidential orders to improve the money, capital levels, and staffing. Now, is that to cut staffing? Is that going to improve the capital levels of what you're paying the staff? Think about what I'm saying because the layoffs are everywhere. This is according to Claro's co-founder, Brian Graham. As the memory of last year's regional banking crisis begins to fade, it's easy to believe the industry is in the clear. But the high interest rates that caused the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank and its peers in 2023 are still at play. And the interest rates are, have not been cut. Inflation's still skyrocketing. Said after hiking rates 11 times through July, the Federal Reserve, there is what's happening. That's the problem. It's on purpose. Said after these 11 rates, the Feds had yet to start cutting its benchmark. As a result, hundreds of billions of dollars of unrealized losses on low interest bonds and loans remain buried on banks' balance sheets. That combined with the potential losses on commercial real estate leaves swaths of the industry in trouble, guys. Um, I've heard reports that some of these smaller banks now have crippled the ability for withdrawals. The ones that are in trouble, they're trying to improve their capital, as they say. Some people have been told that they may not get their money to June or July because of what's going on. I haven't seen it here yet, but it's going to be everywhere because the Federal Reserve is controlled not by this country, but by the world bankers. Of about 4,000 U.S. banks analyzed by consulting firm Claros Group, 282 institutions have both high levels of commercial real estate exposure, people can't buy homes, and guys, the rate of people being foreclosed on and repoed is skyrocketing. It says, again, 4,000, 282 of the 4,000 institutions have both high levels of commercial real estate exposure and large unrealized losses from the rate surge. Unrealized losses, guys. That's the key word that they use when they're in big trouble. Why aren't they realized? You don't have a, an accountant good enough to put that in the forefront, or are you just putting your head in the sand and hiding things? This is a potential toxic combo that may force these lenders to raise fresh capital or engage in mergers. Now, without that overnight window, you, that fresh capital is hard to come by. But how are they going to do it? They're going to lock your money up. They're going to bail themselves in. It's not a bailout anymore. It's a bail-in, and that's what we're about to see happening. Now, I'm, I'm sure in the comments when after a video when I say, where's your money? You better turn it into assets. Now, I'm not talking about precious metals. I'm talking about survival assets. In other words, think. Just sit down and think logically for a minute. If they're about to collapse the banks, your money is going to be turned into digital um, currency on a card that's going to be highly regulated. You get what they say you can get, and when they raise taxes, there's no need to call an accountant. Oh, that's going to be handled right away. It's going to be automatically deducted to where you're left with almost nothing till everything's destroyed. Why would you want to do that? Of course, you got to have some in there because you have automatic withdrawals, insurance, health care, things like that. I understand that. Okay? But the rest of that that you're setting on what thinking, like the article started out with, the world has forgotten in just one year what has had started the collapse then but it's been going on for a while but it really started there and a lot of eyes were open but they kind of stopped talking about it to where the nation would go back to sleep make sure you've got plenty of food that's the number one thing you're going to have to have water and food beyond everything out else and you're going to have to have personal safety and survival tools Solar's getting cheaper, guys, and uh, you you may not be able to afford enough to power your whole home. And if you're like me, each year you may have added a few hundred dollars worth of panels or something to try to build it up. But still, I don't have enough to run everything. 
but I've got enough to get the basics done as far as lights, communications, uh, refrigeration, small air conditioners if needed. Can't run the big stuff, you know, but I can run a couple small deep freezers. I've, been, I've done that during power outages, things that are very important. Uh, and that, those are crucial investments. And I'm not saying that because our website has always had the three major things, food, water filtration, solar there. That's not what this is about. This is a warning to you guys to wake up and to spread the word. Let me say this. 99% of the viewers of this channel are awake. And I'm not, this is not an insult. But spread the word. Talk to people. And uh, I've heard one guy that's on YouTube earlier today he talk about he's been warning his family members for a long time. He's an accountant, by the way. And um, one of them had just got stuck with what I was talking about. Like, it's going to be three or four months before now you can access your money. I don't know the details on that. I backed it up and listened again to see if I could get any more information from that. But um, that's what's happening. They are wanting to destroy everything and let it burn to the ground and as a phoenix rises into the new world order and they've got to destroy everything just in their minds to build the world in their image basically in their mental image more than 280 banks with nearly 900 billion in total assets are at risk of needing capital because of high levels of commercial real estate and losses tied to interest rates. Thank you, Federal Reserve. This is a chart also by the Claros Group, guys, called Stressed Banks. The blue blocks on the left, the larger ones, are the size of 16 banks that we have that are $412.7 billion in to, uh, total assets. That's what they have. Now, to the right, Smaller box, smaller banks. These banks have a total, which are 265 banks, of 363 billion in assets. Then one bank at the bottom, probably J.P. Morgan. I'm not sure. It doesn't say. One bank, 116.3 billion in total assets. So, these are the people in trouble. One of them is a big bank, right? 265 are small banks, 16 are larger banks as far as asset volumes go. So this is widespread and it covers a wide territory. Guys, it's going to happen overnight. I don't know what night, but it's coming very quickly. It's already been a year, and look at the situation of the nation. Now, how they got that chart was... It said the study based on regulatory filings known as call reports screened for two factors. Banks were commercial real estate loans made up over 300% of capital. And firms were unrealized losses on bonds and loans to push capital levels below 4%. All planned. Claros declined to name the institutions in its anal uh, analysis out of fear of inciting deposit runs. Did you hear that? In, it's not highlighted. They refuse to name those institutions we just saw in that chart. Why? Out of fear of inciting deposit runs. Do you realize how close to the edge we are? But there's only one company with more than 100 billion in assets found in this analysis. Now, this is New York Community Bank. I was wrong. It says, in the given factors of the study, is not hard to determine. New York Community Bank, the real estate lender, there we go. That's why real estate and look at what they're doing in new york trump now they're locking up uh his big hotel there in new york uh, padlocking it because he can't come up with the bond money for this situation a banana republic situation that's going on there and in atlanta but they're killing themselves new york is on purpose They've been paid to do this. You know who starts with an R. I mean an S and ends with an S. Now, the real estate lender that was New York Community Bank that avoided disaster earlier this month, not a year ago, with a $1.1 billion capital injection from private equity investors led by ex-Treasury Secretary Stephen Mnuchin. 
He was there under Trump. Most of the banks deemed to be potentially challenged are community lenders with l less than $10 billion in assets. Just 16 companies are in the next size bracket that include the regional banks. That's that blue chart on the r left. Between $10 billion and $100 billion in assets, though they collectively hold more assets than the 265 community banks combined. But they're in trouble. Now, when you're looking at billions of dollars, guys, that's a lot of money. But when you think about our deficit being in the trillions, all the banks combined couldn't bail it out. If there were just 10 banks, this is Graham, again from Claros, he said, if there were just 10 banks that were in trouble, they would all have been taken down and dealt with just like the three in California. But why didn't they do it now? Because it's too big. When you've got hundreds of banks facing these challenges, the regulators, regulators have to walk a bit of a tightrope. They do. Why? What did he say a while ago? To prevent bank runs. They know they're in trouble, so they're going to manipulate behind the scenes so that it continues this collapse. Like It's like an upside-down pyramid at this point, guys. The, the very bottom point is where it's all going to fall into the hands of the regulators of the world banks, the world federal reserves who is owned by just a few people. Guys, pay attention to what we're talking about. Keep enough money that you got to have. Start putting money into survival food or anything that you need to survive. You may have the food. Do you have a way to heat if the power goes out? Maybe a wood burner heat or something like that. Just think about that extra water, water filtration, things that your family's going to need, down-to-earth, on-the-ground things they're going to need. Think about a couple of things like maybe some CB radios or shortwave radios for communication in those times. And if you've got even a small panel like a situation, four panels, a couple of batteries, inverter, you can run those a lot of electronics on that including your communications, TVs, computers. You don't if to just go to the ground level of and think about how you could use what you've got. And if you're like a lot of us, you don't have a lot, right? But you maybe have listened for over 10 years now to me and other people and built up your stock as you could afford it. It's also a time to think about some toys that may not come in real handy, extra boats or things like that that could be turned into assets. While there's still maybe a market for some of these, it may be a discounted market. But think about that. I've been doing that. Um, so just it's going to get down to where the rubber meets the road is one of my favorite pastors used to talk about that's what we're coming to now do you want to be floating around in some delusional world thinking it's all going to come back even if a new president comes in they've already started they needed four years to collapse everything and they've gotten it And I don't think they're going to allow a lot of political changes to happen. So don't put your faith in that of any man. Pray, get right with the Lord, and prepare for your family. Don't do like a lot of people say, well, he provided for the birds and all. You're not a bird. He told people throughout the Bible to prepare. Joseph, Noah, prepare. I'm not going to fly in here and drop sandwiches to you. I'm telling you now, things are coming on this planet that you're going to have to be ready for. Joseph, listen, he prepared and saved the entire Middle East. Do what you got to do, guys. We're getting to that point now. It's time to quit playing games. Get real with what you've got to do. So heads up, be safe.